how's it going people welcome back to the channel and welcome back to turkish talk it's been a little while since i've done a solo so i thought you know what what better time to do a solo than after the champions league quarter final draw we was in it porto dispose of them penalty shootout we talked about that with curtis i'm going to talk about it with steve and james come i think monday on title talk i think after the fa cup weekend that's probably the best to see where city and liverpool are draw and whatnot and then we can really start talking to steve and james about the business end who they got in the fa cup who we got in the champions league the premier league running the city game on the 31st so first thing first make sure you subscribe people Make sure you subscribe right now, put the notification bell on as well so you don't miss any uploads, any lives, any streams, all of that. And yeah, we're here to talk Champions League. Um, and this is what we wanted. This is what I wanted. You know, I'm, I'm sensing and I'm seeing a lot of tweets and comments and and videos and, and, and clips of people nervy and, you know, biting fingernails already, looking at the semi-final and the potential that if we do get passed by and it'll be Real Madrid or City and... Let's not think too far ahead. And this is coming from me, who will go on to say we should beat Bayern. And, and I'll tell you why we should soon. I mean, uh, I, I just see AFTV Extra post a clip. And in the clip, I said we should beat Bayern. And already the top comment is, ah, oh, please, Turkish, don't like, you know, don't say that. This is what the rival fans will hold on to. Listen, I just say what I think. No disrespect to Bayern, but we should beat Bayern. You know, I'm not saying we will. I'm saying we should. I'm saying we're the favourites over the two legs. Am I lying? People will mention heritage and people will mention them out of Champions League's buying of one. Yeah, that's all good and well. Big up. Well done. It's nice. Thank you. I wish we had one. But the reality of the matter is we've all looked at Bayern Munich this season and said, hmm, they started the season as top three favourites for the Champions League in third, quite considerably behind the uh, um, Man City and Real Madrid. And going into the knockouts, you know, we pipped them in terms of bookies, favourites and, and betting odds and all of this. And now that's not the be all and end all. You know, we, we've seen that in the past. Bookies don't know everything, but they tend to, you know, it's, it, it's their money at the end of the day. They're trying to, you know, they're trying to make money. So they, they, they their betting odds are a decent metric to go by. If you don't want to go by that, we can look at buying um, in the league and and say, well, they ain't really living up to expectation. And you look at us in the league and we're top of the league. In a league where, you know, we have a City and we have a Liverpool and we have a Pep and we have a Klopp. So, in my opinion, we should. I, I see a few comments saying, you know, we are not favourites. We are favourites for this. You know, I just don't understand what the, what the big problem is saying that we're favourites. Does it put pressure on us? Yes, but this is what it's all about. You know, players that play for Arsenal Football Club should want to be under pressure, should want those Champions League nights under the lights, should want to be playing Bayern Munich with the chance of playing Real or City in the semi-finals. You know, so for me as an Arsenal supporter, as an Arsenal fan, to say we should, what's what's the problem? Or any fan to say we should, what's the problem? Don't really see a big problem with it. We are favourites. On the flip side, I see people saying we're smoking them and whatnot. I ain't going to go that far. I ain't going to go that far, people, but um yeah we are favorites big up cyrus as well member come on my bro come on um love for the love i see a super chat there for philippe let me let me get this one in now since it's the only super chat way and i'm thinking yeah let's let's get this one and big up philippe he says big up turkish needs to be an investigation city and arsenal get the toughest draws liverpool get the easiest path we'll help them in the title race i haven't actually checked on liverpool's i know they got atalanta and I've heard that they could face Bayer Leverkusen in the final. But again, all I know for sure is they got Atalanta. I haven't looked. If you look, watch Big Six yesterday, I, I, I tried to watch Europa League and I fell asleep. Ended up being late for Big Six, costing me points in the prediction table. So I'm not too interested in the draw either. Um, I know you've got some people out there saying, the cheek of it, you've been in there for seven years and look at you now. No, I just could When we was in there, I didn't want to be in there. I didn't even want to watch the draws. I didn't care too much. Just go and try and win it. But now it's Champions League, obviously, we care. Um, in terms of the whole rigged thing, I mean, it is looking eerily similar to the the path and direction last season where most of the favourites were on one side, which eventually left Man City against Inter Milan in the final. So I think PSG, Dortmund, I think Atletico um, and Barcelona are probably looking at it 
thinking, we've got an opportunity here. We've got an opportunity. You know, I know Dortmund's, yeah, I, I don't see them, you know, getting past Atletico in two legs. Um, but Atletico have some pedigree themselves. I mean, they've got a manager that's, you know, top, top, in my opinion, third behind Pep and um, Klopp. Then you've got Barca, who, again, if we're talking heritage, you know, we've been a part of Barca's heritage in the Champions League with that final in 06 and a couple of, I say a couple, was it three? Last 16 exits following that. I think it was two for sure, maybe three. Um, and you've got PSG who, listen, it's not the first time we've said it looks like it's Mbappe's last season. It might not be the last time. It should be the last time. But I'm sure he'd want to go out with a bang as well with all the um, dice they've rolled over there in Paris with you know Neymar and Mbappe and Messi and all of the players they've tried to you know squeeze in over the years to try and get the the pinnacle for them, which is the Champions League. It would be quite fitting to see, you know, it all fall apart in terms of the squad they built. But Mbappe, you know, pushing them onto the final in his last competitive game for PSG, potentially against the Real Madrid, the club that everyone expects him to go to. So I see three of the four teams there, excluding Dortmund, with quite a bit of quite a bit of clout to make the final. You know, they've all got their reasons that they can be there, um, which will be interesting. And when I look at that side of things, who would I predict makes the final out of the lot? Atletico, Dortmund, expect Atletico, PSG, Barca. That's it. That's a tough one to call PSG, Barca. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say PSG just because of the Mbappe factor. I think Barca's the better team, got the better quality all round. Even that, even that. I'm hesitant to say that, but I think PSG should pip them with the Mbappe factor. And the PSG Atletico, listen, that, listen, the styles make fights. And that 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 would be a great semi-final. Uh, maybe not for the neutral because of the way sometimes Simeone sets up, but it would be a great tactical battle. On our side of things, it's hard to see, it's hard to look past and think past the quarterfinals. It's hard. To, I mean, we can all say, all right, Man City should beat Real. You know, Man City should beat Real. We saw what happened last year. Um, they're the best team in the world, treble winners. They should beat Real. Arsenal, Bayern, very difficult to call. You know, and earlier I said we should. I still think we should, you know, but it's still a difficult one to call. I'm not calling an Arsenal win right now. What I'm saying is we should win, you know. What I'm saying is I'm not weary. I'm not nervous. I'm not put off by the fact that we've got Bayern. In fact, this is what, you know, this is what I wanted us to be back in the Champions League for. It would have been nice to get a Dortmund and pretty much, you know, secure or be confident about a Champions League semi-final. Yeah, that would have been nice. But at the same time, we're not in Champions League to to be playing PSV and Lons and Sevilla and Porto and, and Dortmund, with all due respect. We want the big nights. We want the, 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 the heritage clubs. You know, that's what we want. We want Bayern. We want Real. Moving heritage aside, we want City. You know, because I'm not putting them in the same heritage bucket as the as the previous two. So this is, I'm all for it. I can't wait. I can't wait. My first appearance on AFTV, February 2017, Luton Airport, having just landed after the freshman we got in Munich, 5-1. My first appearance on AFTV. I think I've got to go. I think I've got to be in Munich. Come full circle. I think I've got to be in Munich. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be in Munich. As long as I can sort a ticket out, I think it's fate. I think from my first interview to be Bayern in the Champions League and for us now to be back in the Champions League, into the quarterfinals and getting Bayern again with the Kane factor on top. I haven't mentioned the Kane factor because I don't care. I don't care about Harry Kane. I, he's not my... For me, I don't care if he wins what he wins post-Tottenham. For me, the the the, the joke... The laugh was he didn't win anything at Tottenham. In, in fact, I think if he wins stuff post Tottenham, that kind of further justifies the, the the laughter at Tottenham, in my opinion. I'm not saying I want them to win it because we've got them next. Obviously, I want us to wipe the floor and hopefully get the job done. But I'm not dwelling on Kane here. I don't really give a shit. And the more I think we talk about Kane and in the build up to this, the more motivation we give him. And we know players are on socials. 
And I'm sure Kane's Kane might be trending now, knowing Twitter, knowing the way that is. He might be trending. But best believe that in the build up to that, if we make a meal of Harry Kane, then we'll just give him one of the best, if not the best striker in the world, more motivation to get the job done. Do we want that? He's already the best, if not, well, top two, if not best, right? He's already the best striker in the world or one of the two best strikers in the world. I don't want to be giving him any more motivation. Big up Matisse in the chat. I'm sure you will be there. I'm sure you will be there. Make sure you subscribe to Matisse. Watch alongs. Um, agenda in full flow now. Um, but yeah, I'm not dwelling on Kane, man. Don't give him any more motivation. Yeah, don't give him any more motivation. Let's just, let's focus on our job. Yeah, and overall buying this season, they haven't been great. You look at Arteta's record against Tuchel, even when it looked like Chelsea were on the path to, you know, being a better side, a more competitive side, and Arsenal were on the path to nowhere. Even then, Arteta versus Tuchel, Arteta got the better of him. So I like to look at these things rather than ex-Tottenham striker playing for Bayern Munich. Can we stop him winning the trophy? Fuck stopping someone else winning. Let, bruv, let's focus on us winning the trophy. I don't want to dwell on that. Let's not take our eyes off the ball. This ain't about Kane. This is this is about Arsenal. This is about Bayern. This is about the Champions League quarterfinals. Fuck Harry Kane. But like I said, one of the best, if not the best striker in the world. I just don't want him to have any extra motivation. I'm good. We're good. Thank you. Thank you. It would be an interesting battle, though. I can't lie. Saliba, Gabriel, Harry Kane. Um, yeah, it would be an interesting battle, but I'm not going to dwell on it. You know, I'm not. Gonna, people tell me not to jinx things. People are upset with me saying we should do this or we should do that. You know, trying to get onto Harry Kane now and making a meal of you know it's it's our first time playing against Kane since he was at Tottenham. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. In my opinion, anyway, each to their own. Each to their own. But me, nah, nah. I'm not focusing on one player. I'm focusing on what it is and where we are, and what it is is a Champions League quarter final when where we are is one of the favourites for the competition. You know, I say one of the favourites, loosely I say that, because really and truly behind City, um, there's a big drop-off in terms of who people think next or, you know, the favourites after City. But that's, you know, that's where we are. That's who we are now. And 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 we've got to, we've got to enjoy it. We've got to enjoy it. Let's not, let's not force any other narratives, in my opinion. The only narrative I see is our last Champions League knockout game it before this season was Bayern Munich it ended 10-2 and now we meet again that's the narrative I want to focus on that's the narrative for me any other narrative yeah yeah side stories in the big scheme of things side stories um but yeah I've been talking for about 13 minutes now I've just clocked 1.6k in the building so firstly hit the like button people let's try and get to a thousand likes if we can Secondly, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. Big up people becoming members. I will remind people there's nothing yet on this membership side of things on my channel. Obviously, the big six memberships have opened and Discord servers ready. So that's that's all um, active. Um, but I do have plans to do stuff for members on my channel. But big up everyone that is a member. I think I've got like a 20, 25 members. Big up because you lot have supported the thing through times where I'm not even doing videos. You know, this season, videos have been few and far between, especially the first half. And People still remain subscribed. People still remain as members. So big up. Appreciate the love. Um, but we will go into the chat as well. Let me see what people are saying. People are saying facts. It's the revenge tour. It's the revenge tour. Richard says, thoughts on Serge Gnabry's return to the Emirates. I mean, Gnabry's always spoke well of us, you know, but that doesn't really matter. You know, he's going to want to win this game. He's going to want to give us a glimpse of what could have been with him potentially. You know, um, it, it, it's never felt like he's had a chip on his shoulder with Arsenal, even though the way he was managed and the way he left probably wasn't, well, I say probably. Now you look at what he's gone on to achieve and, and, and the quality he's shown, it wasn't the right way to go about it. Big him up because he's never had a bad word to say about us. And in terms of talking about Premier League and English football, he's always shown us respect and, and love to a certain extent. So, but that his return, he's got enough motivation there himself to... To do something, um, which again is a is a nice side story. And when you think that more often than not he's deployed on the right, I'm not sure this season, if I'm honest. I haven't watched Bayern much at all this season, but more often than not deployed on the right, 
our left hand side is probably weakest defensively. Big up Kibio who stepped that up, you know, since Zinchenko's absence. But I'm just talking about generally the left hand side seems to have been over the years the the susceptible side to opposition attack and counters and whatnot. Um, so that would be interesting. But yeah, I'm not I'm not fast. I mean, they got quality. We've got quality. Um, I'll be honest. I think I think they have more quality. If I'm honest. But I think we have the better manager and we have the better playing. Like when I say better manager, it kind of all falls, all of this stuff I'm gonna say now falls under the better manager, better playing style, um, better philosophy, structure, instruction, better built, better built sides than I think Bayern. Even though individually, when you look at Bayern, hella quality, hella quality, but they haven't found the person to knit it together well enough yet. So I think. Yeah, quality wise, we can we can look at Bayern and and you know scare ourselves as much as we want, but the reality is, quality wise, we shat all over Porto, but because they have a manager who knows how to set up well, who knows how to get the best out of his team, who knows how to his philosophy, his instruction, the, everything I said about Mikel, you can say similar about Conte South of Porto in a different way. And I say different way because it's a different club, different revenue source streams and so on, different levels, different ambition and, and whatnot. Sometimes it's not. In modern day, I say sometimes, modern day, most time, it's not just about the quality. Back in the day, yeah, when I preferred football, I mean, you'd look at two sides and say, the quality in that side, they're going to win. And more often than not, they they tended to do the job, the, the side that had more quality. Now, not so much, in my opinion. Now, not so much. Arguments can be made because I think the quality overall, sorry, has dropped. But I think, yeah, I think quality-wise, Bayern pip us, but it's not it's not about quality anymore. Um, and uh, I bet on Mikel to to get the job done against Bayern. I'd be very upset if we went out to Bayern. You know, that, is that arrogant? I don't think so. I'd be very upset if we went out to Bayern. Now it would it wouldn't be upset like I would have been against Porto. And not only Porto, last 16 as well. Obviously, this is quarters and it's Bayern Munich. But I feel like, especially especially with the first leg being at the Emirates and against a team that are not going to set up like Porto, I think the emphasis will be on us to, to take it home in the first leg. You know, I said get the job done in one against Porto. I'm not saying get the job done in one against Bayern, but have that mentality. Have that mentality that this is the home leg. Let's let's leave them with little to no motivation heading into the second leg. That's that's the approach I expect to see more so than the pragmatic approach that it seemed like we set up with against Porto. Whether that was us setting up or whether that's Porto's tactics, essentially putting us in that predicament. Either way, I don't expect the same against Bayern. So the first leg, Emirates, you have to go for it. We have to go for it. We have to take the game to them. No away goals. Um, five one, five one. The last two times we've met, and yeah, even though none of these players were part of that, they've just come over. They've just come over a difficult two leg tie against a very dogged team in Porto that I think will bode very well for the experience they 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 need going into games, even against Bayern or Real or City teams that will be more expansive because when it gets tight and it. And it gets tight quite often in the Champions League. You need that experience and that know-how and that patience and calmness and composure in in the tightest of moments in games. And I think the Porto one would have done us a hell of a lot of good going into this Bayern one. But yeah, goals. I want goals in the first leg. Goals. I think ideally we beat them by a two-goal margin. Two nil, three one, four two. Even though four two doesn't sound as nice as three one and two nil. Conceding two goals is not is not good. But I look at the way Man United played against them, scored goals. What was the two Man United results? What was the two Man United results? One was 4-3, wasn't it? James, the two Man United Bayern results, what were they? Four, was it 4-3 four, three or 4-3 three and 1-0? Yeah, I mean, Man United put up a fight against them. And we've seen Man United in the league. Putting up facts is not something they've been doing in the league, that's for sure. But against Bayern, they managed to pull out a performance, pull out 
pull out something that I remember at the time people looked at and said, oh, Ten Hag might have signed. Lost 4-3. But in reality, they didn't have nothing and it was just a, a smoke screen for more bullshit. But I'm just saying, you look at overall Bayern Munich in the league, you look at the example that we have against an English side this year in the Champions League and how can you not be, I'll say quietly confident because it's it Bayern ain't a team where you can be like, I'm confident. Nah. Bayern ain't buying up before, and that, that's a fact. Bayern are not the buying up before, but it's quietly confident. It's quietly confident that, you know, Mikel's got the, the nous and the know-how to, to manoeuvre through these next two legs against Bayern and get the job done, you know. After that, and if there isn't after that, you cannot say quietly confident anymore. I think that's when more nerves might kick in because <laughs> playing Real or City in the Champions League semi-final, and the nerves wouldn't necessarily be just because it's Real or City. It'll be because it's a Champions League semi-final. I mean, I was nervous as hell against Villarreal, you know, in 06. I was nervous as hell. So when you're in a Champions League semi-final, as fans, fair enough. You know, it doesn't matter who you're playing. The nerves, the nerves are flowing through. But yeah, quietly confident against Bayern. And then I'm going to try and enjoy the ride if we do make it after. Which just is so delusional. <laughs> What part? I've said a lot. Let me get into the Super Chats because there is a fair few. Um, Naki says, the first leg is on the day before Eid. Please win. Is it, yeah? I haven't even checked the dates. What was it? 6th of April and... Ah, it's, it's coming in, in two weeks anyway. Ramadan Mubarak to everyone um, following. City had the same run in last year in the Champions League, said Brandon. Oh, yeah. City had by what was City Bayern Real okay Bayern Real Inter who was that who did they have in the last 16 last year can't remember to be honest when we wasn't in the Champions League I wasn't watching it much I'll be honest with you and um, Patrick says you see Bayern can't have away fans yeah so we get more I've saw I, I've saw that as well I've seen that as well sorry and that's just further further reason why that first leg we got to take the game to them. We've got to take the game to them. There's no leaving it for the second leg, in my opinion. There's no pragmatic approach in the first leg to try, I don't know, keep a clean sheet or, you know, not get carried away. Now, I think in the first leg, no Bayern, no, no Bayern Munich fans. We are, in my opinion, the better side right now. Um, and we should be the better side going into the fixtures in two weeks. You know, then not much should change. I think... It just provides more more um, base to the argument that we go in in the first leg. Joseph says Saliba and Gabby about to have their pockets full. Fingers crossed. Random question, but does does Arda have Ozil potential or more? <coughs> I'll be honest, man. Ozil in his prime, class. I mean, class. Ozil in his prime. I just I think if he if he'd done it at Arsenal for a, a bit more than than he did, and if he if he can't put it all on him, I think Ozil's I think Ozil had so much quality that he could have gone down with with icons of the game in his position, but I think overall when you look at his career, it didn't live up to the expectation I had anyway. Maybe it did to others, um, but when we talk about prime Ozil. It's hard for many to reach that sort of a standard. Arda Guler, listen, Arda Guler has a lot of potential, has a lot of potential. And in my opinion, he's a bit different to Ozu in the sense that a bit more rugged, a bit more modern day about him. Um, he's he, he's not as good a passer. He's, he, he is a good passer, not as good a passer because that was Ozil's thing. Um, but he's more... Le lethal, again, I don't want to use that word because people will get carried away, but he's more efficient... Again, in the final third, I can't say that because when you look at Ozu in the final third, in terms, Arda had more of a balance between being the 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 guy that gives you the ball and the guy that receives the ball, if that makes sense. In the final third, um, he's just got a bit more about him going into the box, whereas Ozu, in and around the box, was more of a architect. I don't see Guler as an architect. Um, but listen, it's all potential right now. Potential, we've seen many times, more often than not, doesn't ever get filled. Um, so we will see. Fingers crossed we will see. Listen, Turkey, Euros this summer. 
I'm just I've just got my fingers crossed. Um Abu Bakar says Turkish, you must. Well, we will see. Anib says I'm okay with buy and draw, but the semi draw is peak. Yeah, but again, I don't want to think too much about semis before before we, we get past Bayern because I was already thinking about I'll be honest, I was already thinking about quarters before we, we got the job done against Porto. So um I don't want to make the same mistake and get carried away because this is definitely uh a much sterner test. Nathan says, remember Turkish's debut on AFTV? Revenge time. Uh, revenge time indeed. Or will it be more tears outside the Allianz? We will find out. Well, it wasn't outside the Allianz, man, to be with Luton Airport. But if I do go, which I, I have plans to, then it will be outside the stadium and hopefully it won't be any tears. Hopefully it'll be, it'll be all teeth, smiles. London Run says, I'm with you. We can roll over Bayern, but we have to start fast and win that first leg. Listen, by at least two goals, this super chat came in very early and you've pretty much said what I said. Um, exactly bang on. Um, I 100% agree. Alexander says, tell them Turkish facts. We should beat Bayern. It's written in the stars. Not Kane out of the Champions League and watch him lift the gold cannon. Yeah, I've seen that picture of the, the top scorer. Um, trophy? Do you call it a trophy? The top scorer awards that they give in um, Germany. It's the cannon, and we know what the cannon's about. South Force says, big up my guy, Turkish. Um, I think we win home and draw away. We can do it, but April is going to be so tough because a game with three-day difference, turnaround, we can do. It's about mentality. It's about, it is, it's, of course, it's about mentality. Um, not 100% about mentality. Quality comes into play. I mean, there's different... There's, there's different ingredients to success. Mentality is one of the main ingredients. Quality is another main ingredient. Um, another main ingredient is, uh, in my opinion, in modern day football, I, this is probably not the word for it, but I might think of a, a better word soon, but it's humbleness. Maybe the chat can help me with a better word because I'm going to explain what I mean by that. You could be one of the greatest ever footballers on the ball in this modern day era. But if you don't listen, if you don't work hard, you won't be remembered. You won't be part of a great side. You won't you won't work under these modern day managers. Now, whether that's for better or for worse, we can we can debate that on a, on a separate one, because you know how I feel about football now compared to 20 years ago and so on. Um, but I think players also need now a certain level of. I'm not the man. Even if you, even if growing through your academies and school and all levels, you are the man. You are the one that runs through ten men and bangs in seven goals um, against, you know, West Ham under sixteens. When you reach the top level of football now, mentality is one thing, quality is one thing, and I guess what I'm saying falls on the mentality. I guess, but I think when you say mentality, you more mean that that mentality to win, that mentality to compete. That, that that real men mentality in terms of when we look at old school football and we look at the icons that have come out of it and and what they brought to their teams outside of just quality. Mentality goes a long way. So mentality, quality, 100%, but a certain level of humbleness, a certain level of um, being down to earth definitely comes into it. Definitely comes into it. Not getting complacent is another way, to, another way to look at it. But yeah, um, hopefully I've made sense there. I've tried. Loz says, this is a symbolic tie in the aspect that if we perform and win, it shows that it's truly a new era for Arsenal Football Club. 100%. I mean, I won't say there's not examples that this is a new era already. I mean, Declan Rice, 100 million transfer, that indicates new era. Um, competing last year and then competing again this year. I mean, that's one or two examples, however you want to split it of this is a new era. Um, so I'd say they're examples of new eras. And yes, Yes, a, a win against a powerhouse in Europe would be another stepping stone along the way to getting rid of the skeletons in the closet, getting rid of those PTSD moments that, for me, any sorry for me anyway, tend to even you know haunt my current thoughts. You know, a lot of fans out there want me to be a bit more gung ho in in my approach to Arsenal and want me to show a lot more chest and whatnot. I get that, each to their own. I've just got a lot of PTSD from the way me as a fan and fans in my era were treated, you know, heading into the Emirates and across the Emirates era for a good long 10 years at the minimum. Um, a win against Bayern would, you know, 
the next time we're in the Champions League, I won't be thinking about 10-2 Bayern. I'd be thinking about, remember, we knocked out Bayern last year. So these are things that need to happen to eliminate all the skeletons in the closet from before. For us fans, you know, them skeletons are not there for the players because the players weren't a part of that. But the players should also be able to use that. Um, to use that to, you know, create history for themselves. It's the, the, the players that win majors for Arsenal next, they go down in history. You know, every player that wins majors for Arsenal, you know, they go down in history in some way, shape or form. But, I mean, the next the next Premier League, the next Champions League, every single player goes down as a legend. Every single player. So that's enough motivation there for them to, you know, to do their thing. Big up Chris. He says, Arsenal's Champions League journey ends here. So many English fans, Chelsea aside, disrespect Tuchel so much. It's a joke. He is an elite gaffer with top Champions League pedigree. Tactically clear of Mikel, Bayern's team is also better. Chris, how do you base this, though, my bro? How do you base that ta that two calls tactically clear of Mikel? How does that? I'm I'm not I'm not here to argue this right now because I haven't got you know two calls record. At, I know Arteta, but you can't just come out and say that when we've saw we we saw two call. I mean, when you know what's funny when Emery came into. When Emery came into Arsenal, apparently Emery flopped that PSG. That was the narrative, right? Emery flopped that PSG coming to... Apparently Tuchel didn't flop at PSG, but, but Emery did. I'm, I'm not saying Tuchel flop. I'm just saying the narratives are very different when it comes to talking about Arsenal, talking about other teams sometimes from opposition fans. This is why I say Arsenal are the most hated. Because some of the narratives don't really make sense to me. Tuchel comes into the league, he wins the Champions League. I mean, the way he won the Champions League, great, it's a Champions League. Yes, Di Matteo won it the same way, by the way. Is Di Matteo tactically clear of people? Is he a great manager? Is he elite? I mean, okay, so he won the Champions League, Tuchel, great. Arsenal haven't won it before. People in the comments, oh, you haven't won. I get that. Cool, I've heard it all before. But then he went on to manage Chelsea for, what, another 18 months or however many, how long was it? How, however long it was, it didn't work out for him, did it? Now he's 10 points behind... Jabi Alonso at Bayer Leverkusen. And big up Jabi Alonso, he looks like a good manager. But you're saying he's tactically clear of a manager that is in a league that he got sacked from and a manager that's in the league that he's now competing in at the top of the league with the best manager in the world and, and the second best in Klopp, in my opinion. But the guy that got sacked and now is 10 points behind Jabi Alonso is tactically clear of Mikel. It just doesn't make sense, Chris, if I'm honest. Thanks for the super chat. Wad says, yesterday, Turk yesterday, Turkish and Curtis, I said we should face big teams, take us to the next level to boost our players. I agree. We should beat Bayern 100%. This is what it's all about. I wanted Bayern in the groups. You know, I wanted to get that test. Um, but it is what it is. To, to be real, says there won't be Bayern fans at the... Yep, there won't be Bayern fans at the Emirates. Um, Nathan says, glad to catch a solo stream. Always enjoy these. Need to win convincingly at home. If we are to go through to the semis, then do our best Porto impression away. Yeah, I mean, I never saw Arsenal being that team to, you know, use them sort of tactics in the Champions League because it jarred me against Porto. It used to jar me with Barca and these teams over the years. Um, but sometimes it's a necessity, man. Sometimes it's a necessity. And... You know, great sides have done it in the past, and I'm sure great sides will do it in the future. So, if need be, we can do our best Porto impression. Um, big up Faisal. Hope you're good, my brother. Um, Turkish, loved your channel for years. Will you be going to any Euro games in Germany? I'll be going to Turkey versus Czech Republic in Hamburg. Hope to see you there. We should also snap up Arda, like with Odegaard. I mean, yeah, but Arda Gula is already getting a taste and even though it seems that like Angelotti doesn't favour him too much, because sometimes people argue about the amount of minutes he's getting. Um, yeah, I don't think that Real will be letting him go anytime soon. Um, in terms of the Euros, I'm definitely going Turkey versus Portugal in Dortmund. Um, I'm looking for tickets for Turkey, Czech Republic, and what's the other one? Turkey against one of these playoff winners anyway. That's not even sorted yet, is it? So I'm looking for tickets for them ones. But right now, all I've sorted is Turkey, Portugal um, at this moment in time. So... If you're there, I don't know how close Dortmund is to Hamburg and so on. It shouldn't be too far because, you know, it's in the same group. So we can link up. I'm there from Thursday. I'm there from the Thursday. The game is on the Saturday and I'm flying back on Sunday unless I manage to sort out any more tickets. Um, 
Jesse says, Turkish, did I see you in Finsbury Park Lidl yesterday? Um, no. You might see me in Finsbury Park. I'm here quite often, um, but not Lidl, no. Um, wrong man with beard and hat. But yeah, that tends to happen quite a bit. Um, the Bayern View says, mate, can we collab for this game? My man, perfect. Box to box, AFTV. Do me a favor, by and view, uh, messaging me on Instagram or on Twitter, preferably Instagram, Turkish LDN on both platforms. But if you don't have Instagram, do it on Twitter. 100% will get you for box to box. Um, and I'll give you more details in the in the messages anyway, because I'm not too sure whether box to box happens here, there. Obviously, Emirates first. Are you going to the game? Let me know these things. If you're going to the game, are you coming a couple days earlier? Are you coming on the day? Um, actually, what am I saying? Coming to the game? No Bayern fans are coming to the game. Ah, we'll do our streams. We'll do our streams and hopefully link up in Munich. Joel says, Harry Kane back to bag at least three. <laughs> We've got a Spurs fan in the building. Joel, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, Joel? Oh, Melly says, this running will tell us a lot about the squad Mikel has built. Everyone looks to be fit. Substitutions will be massive in games. 100%. So, you know, um, I think we've, we've got a good record with subs this year as well. well. We've got a good record with everything. Set pieces, subs, defenders scoring goals, most goals in the league, least conceded. A hell of a lot of good records in the league this year or across Arsenal Football Club. 2.2k in the building. Um, how many likes we're on? Let me quickly check how many likes we're on. Surely we'll pass the 500 mark. If we're not past the 500 mark, so I'm going to be disappointed. Let me quickly see. Let me quickly see. 568. All right, cool. I said if we passed the 500, I wouldn't be disappointed. Even though I can't lie to you, I'm slightly disappointed. 2.2k and we're not even past the 1,000. Hit the like button, people. Make sure you subscribe. Chris again says, I respect your views a lot, bro, but people have short memories when it comes to Tuchel. Picked up Chelsea in a mess under Lampard. Outscored Pep in the final with Havertz, Mount and Werner up top. He is elite. Love, Chris. Listen, love for the love. Like One thing I like is... I don't know, have you not clocked it with me? I prefer talking to opposition fans because um, I, I like debates like this. I like debates like this that that cross the, the different sides, the big six sides, European sides, rather than keeping it all in-house with, you know, Arsenal debates about Arsenal or debates about two with Arsenal fans. So love for the love, appreciate that. Um, but, I mean, picked up Chelsea in a mess, Arteta picked up Arsenal in a bigger mess. Um, Outscored Pep in the final with Havertz, Matt and Werner. I mean, outscored might be a stretch. Uh, I think Pep done enough damage to himself as well, but that's not taking away anything from Tuchel. He tactically, he's not just in the final. I think he managed his way through quite well. Um, but, you know, what you just said, they picked up Chelsea in a mess under Lampard. Outscored Pep in the final with Havertz, Matt and Werner up top. But you didn't end with fail to progress and get sacked. And now he's 10 points behind Jabby Alonso, whereas Arteta picked up Arsenal in a mess, won the FA Cup after tactically out. What, what did you use? Tactically or out, he outschooled um, Pep in the semis of the FA Cup, right? Right? Because that was probably more of a schooling than the final itself, in my opinion. And then you have the final against Chelsea. Well, Arteta done his thing again. But what follows is Arteta then progressed slowly at first, before people say another eighth, but yep, slowly at first. And he's here. Should he have been sacked at a couple moments? Probably. And that's what people will lean on and say, you know, he got an extra chance. He got a few lives. But, you know, facts are facts. And those are the facts right now. Um, Tuchel should be winning the league with Bayern Munich. Like, let's put that out there. I'm not even saying it's past him. I, I still think he can come back into it. I as Turkish, I honestly feel that for Arsenal to win any trophy now, we need at least three to two fringe players to step up during this running. Yes, luckily, our fringe players at the moment were players that we were putting all of our eggs into their baskets last summer, last um, season. And by that, I mean our fringe players now are Jesus, our fringe players now are Partey, our fringe players now are Vieira. Um... Who else we got? Who else we got? Timber coming back, which means that, you know, the left back position is all of a sudden, you know, up for debate. So you're right. You're right. I think these men need to step it up. You know, Partey in particular, done nothing all season. It'll be nice for you to do something in the last 10. Jesus, very unfortunate, big injury. 
in you know in a place where reoccurring injuries are are common theme. Um, so yeah, our fringe players now are are a lot better established to actually you know ha have a say in the running. So I'm completely with you there. Um, Abu Bakr says Tuchel is clear of Arteta. I'm sorry to say this. What has Arteta achieved in terms of winning major trophies? Zero. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, it's all relative, isn't it? I mean, football nowadays is is based so much on trophies and just trophies that it's really hard to have a mature debate about this without the fact that trophies have come into play. Football's all about trophies, yes, but if a manager hasn't had the chance at a club that is competing for major trophies and a, and a manager has had a chance at now three clubs that compete for major trophies, I'd expect the one that's been at three clubs that you know are ready to compete for major trophies, PSG, Chelsea and Bayern Munich, to have more about him than the one that's just come in first time as manager to a club that had no hope in hell of competing for major trophies for at least two, three years, at least. So, yes, I guess you're right in the sense of what you're saying, major trophies. I get that. But the fact is they, they haven't had the same platform to work off. And I think the fact is if both were available in the summer, I know who would be getting a lot more calls, and that would be Mikel Arteta. I think I could agree with you on the trophies front there, but you have to agree with me there that if one became available in the summer, I think Tuchel struggles to get another job at a big club. How many chances? How many chances does man need? PSG, Chelsea, Bayern Munich, three clubs competing for major honours. Arteta's been at Arsenal. So, big up Chris. I just, I, I, well, how did the Champions League draw turn into a Tuchel um, debate? Let's go, pro. In Tuchel's Chelsea reign, the only permanent signing he got to use for a whole season was Lukaku. He never had a chance to build his own team like Arteta has. He also has more points now than Pep's Bayern. Well, okay, let's say Lukaku. Do you blame? Do you blame? The, do you blame the reaction from that? I mean, if you're saying Lukaku was his only signing, which I find hard to believe fully, I'll be honest, because it's we don't know the ins and outs of everything. If Lukaku was the only one that he really wanted, and you know, got, you know, how many more chances you want to give him? Because that was a big, big L. Big, big L, you know. And okay, let's move on from that. Um, I did. I checked this a few weeks ago, and I, you know what? I'll check it now. I, I, I want to speak facts rather than just off the top of my head. Let me quickly just check this now. Uh, actually, can I do it on my phone? Standings. I'll have to do it on my phone. Bear with me, people. Just give me a quick sec. Because I did this, and it it, it just made for interesting reading. Premier League. Okay, so what year was it? 2019-20? Is that when... Um, no, it wasn't 2019-20. When did Chelsea win the Champions League? When did Chelsea win the Champions League? 2021? 2021. I'm going to say 2021. Um, all right, cool. So 2021, that's the season... That Tuchel came in midway, yeah? That's the season that Tuchel came in midway. And that was Arteta's first full season, 2020-2021. Okay, so Tuchel came into a side that had just spent a hell of a lot of money in the summer. Arteta, okay, cool. Chelsea finished fourth, 67 points. Arsenal finished eighth, fourth, eighth. What? Arsenal finished 61 points, six points behind. Okay, but that, that's not the narrative. The narrative is fourth and eighth. So Tuchel's first half season, Arteta's first full season, there were six points between them. 21-22 season, Chelsea finished third on 74 points arsenal finished fifth on 69 points so now elite two cool but this is the year he got sacked isn't it is this the year he got sacked i can't remember this guy's trajectory man no that wasn't the year he got sacked that was his that was his only full year right yeah that was his only full year that was the year he made the two finals the fa cup and league cup yeah yeah okay stop me if i'm wrong am i wrong Someone said no. Next one. I'm looking at 20. Okay, so, oh, you said no, you got sacked. Okay, so 21-22 is Tuchel's only full season at Chelsea, having already won the Champions League, coming through, finishing top four. He finished five points in front of Mikel. 
But the narrative is he got top four, Mikel didn't. The first season, six points. The second season, five points. And then even in 22-23, where he got sacked. Yeah, let's not even talk about that. Let's not even talk about that. I don't even want to talk about that. So, elite manager too, cool. Finished six points and five points above Mikel Arteta in the two seasons he finished at Chelsea. Again, I'm not here to... I'm I'm not here to talk about Mikel or, or Tuchel, who's the better manager. I think Mikel, you know, and, and I understand why some might think Tuchel, but the way Tuchel gets bigged up like he's up there with like Pep Klopp, Simeone and these, nah, no chance. No chance in hell. No, I think, I think even Emery shone more than, more than Tuchel. And that's my honest opinion. And you can talk about Patrick Bigger, and we can talk about Tuchel's record against Arte. So there's, we can all make arguments to to justify why we think the way we think. Two point three k in the building, hit the like button. Big up Robert. Ah, oh, Robert, <laughs> don't start this on my channel as well. You know, Turkish. I hope you're good though, bro. Thomas Tuchel is elite. Stop saying this, Robert. Chris, stop saying elite. What? The, how's Tuchel elite? The guy's been at PSG, Chelsea. And Bayern. Chelsea pulled out of Champions League the same way Di Matteo pulled out of Champions League. At PSG, he was deemed not good enough. And at Bayern, he's deemed a flop at this moment in time. Got sacked from Chelsea for Graham Potter. Stop saying elite. You might rate him, and I, and I can understand that more. But the elite thing, we've got to draw a line on that. Tuchel is not elite. Please, let's, let's draw a line. Yeah, I've drawn one here in front of me. You draw one, Robert. Chris, you draw one as well. Elite wasn't the right word to use, please. And Cryptic Dino said, if Tuchel was shitter than Arteta... If Tuchel was shitter than Arteta's... If Tuchel was shitter than Arteta, he would be at Chelsea competing with Arteta and Klopp. He can't do... He isn't. Oh, you're basically... Okay, you're, you're agreeing with me, basically, Dino. Hope you're good as well, my brother. Um... The buy and view message you on Insta, mate. Lovely, lovely. That's box to box sorted. Perfect, perfect. We'll we'll talk about that. Well, I'll message you straight after, but I'll look at the dates and whatnot. We'll sort our box to box. So love for that. Um, Lamin says, "F that frail shit." Time to step to them, man. Hundred percent, Lamin. Hundred percent. F that frail shit for sure. Um, and TBG, the oh, car just got one in. Dream is Arsenal Barca final at Wembley. Avenge 06. I think James literally said that. I think he literally said that. Bayern do them. City would be, you know, part of the the revenge stuff because of the league last year and then and then end with Barca. But like I said, I'm not looking past Bayern. I'm not looking past the first leg. Win that by two goals, Arsenal, then I'll 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 smell the semi-final. Until I, until I smell some of that semi-final, I'm not talking about it. Carl says, we currently have the second most valuable roster in the world. Bayern sixth. Arsenal fans need to act like this team is a favourite and should want semi-finals. Carl, it's funny. It's funny. Because I have a hell of a lot of people that get onto me saying, show some more chest. Oh, I'll replace you on big six with Bavs. Oh, we need an Arsenal fan that can back the, seat, back the side. Turkish can just hold. And then you've got other fans that will be like, Oh, no, I don't show that much chest. Oh, Turkish, please, you're jinxing it. Can't say we should be buying. Can't say we're favourites. You know why I get that? You know why I get the two polar opposites of in terms of fans getting at me? Because I'm balanced. I am balanced. And that's something lost in internet football content creating. Balance is, is lost. It's a, balance is now like a, a fine art. Hard to find. You, if you're balanced now, you're sitting on the fence. Big up Tobes as well. The way he the way he, he turned that one was sick because now a lot of people say it, but he knows himself. Now, if you're balanced, you're sitting on the fence. People want you to be there or there. No, nah, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. I'm balanced. When I'm ready to be there or if I'm ready to be there, I will be there because once upon a time, I was there. I was there. I was effing and blind and telling this player to go, saying I want Wenger out, saying Kronke is out. Bro, you, you got so I was there. So if I need, if I feel the need to be on a complete side, if I, it will be my choice, 
my reasoning and I will be there. I've got no problem being overly positive. I've got no problem being overly negative. What, what I've got a problem is being overly negative or overly positive for reasons that I just can't understand. That's what I don't get. So I, I just try and be balanced. I try and be balanced. That's why I don't, sometimes I don't get, it's funny to me, you know, some of the comments I get. Literally, back to back, sometimes I get a comment like, replace Turkish, he doesn't back Arsenal enough. Turkish is del delusional, like, he, 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 he thinks Arsenal are all that. Back to back, back to back. And I just laugh. I just have to laugh, people. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, we move. We move. Let me see. Balance merchant, says Eric. <laughs> That's, but you know that's funny, and the, and you know why that's funny because if someone said that on Big Six, that would be the narrative for another year. You see how you see how sitting on the fence is a narrative. Balance Merchant will be another narrative. I'm gonna try and, in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on mentioning I'm so balanced on Big Six. I bet you Tobes or someone Matisse comes out with Balance Merchant, the chat will run away with it. I'll be tweeted all the time saying Balance Merchant. This is just the way of internet. This is why people have. If you're on the internet giving your thoughts and feelings, don't get swayed by the crowd. Be you, be yourself, do what you're doing, say what you want to say, as long as you're, you know, you're in a position to back it up and give reasons for, you know, listens to reasons against, then you're, you're good. You're good. <laughs> um, let me see. Let me see. Give me Real over City in the semi final. We smoke them. Well, I prefer Real for many different reasons because I think that City are stronger. Yeah, that's one. But Bernabeu, Madrid, it's what it's all about, isn't it? It's what it's all about. Aaron says, if we want our players to be world-class, these are the moments. Our running looks crazy, but that's how legends are made. We should want this challenge 100%. 100%. Without a shadow of a doubt. Listen, a lot of people are mentioning Saka was poor. Um, narrative, you know, was, was tried to run on big six, you know. That was a moment, and I get it, and I get it. You know, you know what's funny again on the narrative of fans and whatnot. Fans, not me, yeah, but obviously I've been asked about over the weeks. But fans will be like, Saka's world class. No, he's not. Saka, Arsenal, fan. world class. Yes, he is real. What? He's world class on the plane. World class, Saka. He has a poor game in the Champions League. Then, because of the people over there that are saying world class, world class. Oh, you can't believe this. Foden can't. Because of you. Now I'm hearing about Saka's had a poor game. Bro, Saka's allowed a poor game. I'm not the one shouting from the rooftop saying world-class. I don't care. But it's the same fan that will say world-class, world-class, world-class. Someone like Saeed will come to me and be like, well, he didn't play good enough, did he? And I'll be like, no, he wasn't great. And then the same fans that are screaming world-class will be in the live chat or the comment section saying, oh, back him, back Saka, back... Bro, he, played, he had a poor game. Saeed's not lying. Just because you was dancing and raving and shouting from the rooftop saying world class doesn't mean that I now have to come and, you know, disagree with someone that I agree with. Saka was poor. But going on to what I'm going to go on to, the moments that come moving forward, no one's going to give a shit about Saka being poor in the second leg against Porto. If against Munich, he, he, he does sign. No one's going to give a shit. No one remembers when Vinicius plays poorly. or te no, Because Real tend to go on and win shit. But they remember when Vinicius steps up at the biggest moments, you know. So we can, you know, people can talk about a poor second leg performance from Saka all day long. He's got two more legs to, to, to show himself. But this is why I'm hesitant to, you know, put too much pressure on silly things. In my, in my opinion, we don't need people to say Saka's world class. What does it do for us? What does it do for us? Absolutely nothing. If people don't think it's world class, don't think it's world class. Cool, he's better than most of these most of these fans wingers themselves anyway. So fuck him. He says Turks, big up. They want you to get clipped. Never fold, my G. Nobody rates Arsenal, but yet we always must make it. Lee, you see, you're one of the people that there's a few people that like Lee Taylor, Joshua, a few. Uh, I'm forgetting names now, but yeah, bang on, just like me, bro. Just like me. That's what it is. They want you to get clipped. They want you to get clipped. And it's not even a case of... Because some people then will throw out, oh, Turkish is scared to get clipped. I'm not. Who created the big six? Me. Who brought in Skullfuggery into the big six? Me. But I'm scared to get clipped. I'm not scared to get clipped. Even the whole Babs entrance the other day. 
that was me. I, well, not me. I mean, big up Scar Fuggery. He's the he's the artist behind it all. But it was my idea. You think I didn't see the backlash from the Babs episode where everyone was getting onto me on Twitter and on Instagram, on YouTube. Replace Turkish Babs is so much better and all that. I don't mind that. I like that. In fact, I put Babs on because he's completely different to me. So I, I give these, you know, these vultures what they want sometimes. You know? What should, what should, imagine I brought on a, a Lee Gunner or a Curtis. Someone who people would would liken to me a lot more than a Babs. I just try and give people what they want. So I don't mind it at all. I mean, we've got fans that show chest and we've got fans that are pessimistic. I'm more on the pessimistic side. Um, but I'm definitely not scared to get clipped. Fucking hell. But I have got PTSD. But let's get over the line in one major. Then you'll see. I'll, if we win the Premier League or Champions League, then you're, you're going to be seeing me get clipped left, right and centre for the next five years. Without a doubt. We just need to get over the line in one thing. One thing. And I ain't letting one man talk shit after that. But until we get over the line, too much pain I've been through. Too much pain. So let's do it. Turkish, you think Arteta Klopp survive at PSG, Chelsea and Bayern and go four years without a trophy? Um, Klopp, Klopp and Mikel would have been sacked sooner than Tuchel did at all of them clubs. Um, I mean, I get... But, is it, I think you're wrong for putting Arteta and Klopp together. Do I think Klopp survives at Chelsea, PSG and Bayern? Yes. Yes. I mean, Robert, you're... Robert. Listen, two cool and Arteta is one thing, but two cool and Klopp, I ain't here for that. Klopp is... Klopp, Klopp could be two cool's dad or granddad. That's how far I put them apart in a footballing sense. We can't, we can't do that. So Klopp at PSG, Chelsea and Bayern, 100%. Why don't you think he would at Dortmund, titles, Champions League final, Liverpool, title, Champions League, domestic cups? Why wouldn't Klopp? Especially with the money that Chelsea and PSG have and the, and the, the stranglehold Bayern have in Germany. Arteta's another question. I mean, Arteta's very different and you are right in the whole four years without a trophy thing. But at the same time, you know, chopping and changing managers might have worked once upon a time, but it doesn't seem to be the the time for that now. You know, because equally, you're right, four years without a trophy, you know, managers would be sacked from those clubs. But now Chelsea are on the verge of four years without a trophy. Um is it? Yeah, Champions League 2021, 2025. Okay, so it's free this summer. And um, we're on the verge of four years without a trophy. And you've done the opposite, chopped and changed managers. But then you'll got you'll argue that oh, we shouldn't have sacked Tuchel and so on. But that's your that's your heritage. Your heritage is chopping and changing managers. And you loved it once upon a time when it was winning you leagues and champions leagues. Now, not so much. Aya says Turkish is the influx of young fans, which is ultimately a good thing, who are overly emotional. They banter you for everything. You're balanced. It's an issue. You change your mind. You're fickle. That's another one. The whole change in mind flip-flop thing. It's like, ah, I don't get that either. It's, it's like with the Kai thing. I haven't even changed my mind on Kai. Like, he's improved his performances, but people all of a sudden think that's me changing my mind. I mean, I'm going to need a lot more to change my mind. But that doesn't mean I can't praise when I need to praise. And people will say, you was always wrong. See, this is what I'm talking about. So it wasn't the change in position that done it, no. It wasn't the improvement in productivity that done it, no. It was he was always good. It's just now I'm seeing it. Is that that tends to be the argument? It's like let's say I go for a let's say I go calf. I go calf. Order a Turkish breakfast. Order a Turkish breakfast. Why not? Wax it. It's not nice, not nice. Eggs not well done. Um, the sujuk was was yeah, it wasn't sujukin. If you don't know sujuk, get to know people. And um, the halloumi needed a bit more of a frying. But then I go to the cafe two months later, banging, wax everything. Give me more. Bring me more sujuk. Bring me more halloumi. Bring me more all of that. Yeah, that that breakfast banged. Didn't mean the breakfast two months ago banged. 
It's the same breakfast. This one banged. God knows where this analogy's come from, but since we're on the topic of conversation, these are the things that go through my mind sometimes in order to challenge some of these people. ADR says, I was the one underwriting the AFTV clip. I shot you a response and respect your perspective. Oh, it was you, ADR. Come on. See, mom? you know, that's another thing people say. Like, I, I, I reply back to, I'm, ADR, I'm glad for this because you're not doing it. But since we're on the subject of people, you know, supporters, fans, content creators, all that, I'm, I'm someone that always goes through comments and replies that like, here and there, positive and negative. Sometimes I reply and people are like, you're rattled. And I think, so you don't want me to reply? Would that be better? Because I, I feel like engagement is, is such a big part of what I do or what, we, you know, what we're doing here. I, I put that as one of the highest uh, you know, things on the priority list. So I like replying to people. They, oh, you're rattled. Okay, well, I won't reply then. Is that better? Surely not. Um, I shot you a response and respect your perspective. My response is extensive, but hope to collaborate or speak soon. Big up, my man. Come on, ADR. Collaborate. I'll check your channel out. ADR PL review. Okay. I'll check your channel out, bro. I'll check it. And like I said, I look through comments in that. And, and I do. And I do reply a hell of a lot. Big up, Daniel. New member. Big up, Tevin. Existing member for 19 months. One of the OGs. We need to allow the liquor you so he could thrive on his own time. Whether he's world class or not, I need Arsenal to step up as a collective. Exactly. Exactly. Saka being world class or not is not a trophy to me. Big him up. I love Saka. But, you know, if if Saeed, Matisse and Tobes and Grizz and Hugh and all of the, If they all turn around one shot and go, hey, Turkish, Saka's fucking world class. What am I going to do? Take my top off and go running around the room? Like... Okay, it's good that you've realized that now. He must be doing he must be doing that. <laughs> That's it. So I don't know why the constant like Rio, I can't believe Rio doesn't think he's world class. Brother. Shut up. Shut up. Marco says I actually I actually think Arsenal being hated on. Sometimes it's good being the villain and proving the doubt is wrong in the process. 100 percent I prefer being the villain. I prefer being the villain. In every movie, I prefer the villains, the bad guys. They don't win enough at the end of movies. I need more movies where the bad guys win. Please. Too many superhero movies. Bad guys, dead at the end. Superhero, cape on, flying off distance. Sometimes, uh, you know, a love story at the end of it. Nah. Nah, I like, I like villains. I like bad guys. I, I prefer that. I, I much prefer that. So, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> Sorry, I, I keep on meaning to go to the the live chat as well, yeah, but um, the, the Super Chats keep on coming in. Love for all the Super Chats, people. Really appreciate it. Still 2.2K here. Um, so, mad numbers. Um, hit the like button if you haven't done that already. Robert says, because at those clubs, there's no pressure to win year in, year out. At Chelsea, Bayern, PSG, after a season without a trophy, you're gone. At Liverpool, Dortmund, you get time. Hmm. Well, there's no pressure to win year in, year out. Is there pressure to win year in, year out at Chelsea right now, Robert? And I don't think there was pressure for Chelsea to win year in, year out when when Tuchel joined the club after Lampard either. Let's not let's not be disingenuous about these things. Let's not be disingenuous. There was not pressure on Tuchel to win year in, year out with Chelsea. There wasn't. You wanted progress. You wanted a style of play. You wanted to, you know, see something. And, and in the end, you didn't. But there wasn't a pressure to win trophies year in, year out. That's the old Chelsea. That's pre-Lampard Chelsea. M maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm being disingenuous. Let me know. And um, Bayern, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, PSG, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think I think you can still last longer than a year if you don't win something, as long as you're showing something at these clubs. And it also depends on when team when when managers are coming into the team. So yeah, Romster says Turkish. Don't forget that Bayern fans are banned from their next away game in the Champions League, so the Emirates will be only full of Arsenal fans. Great news. More reason why we should, should get the job done. Yeah, should. 
People didn't like that last year when I said we should win the title. People didn't like that. I don't do must. Should. Must is for the favourites, no? Must in the league is City, no? Must in the Champions League is City, no? If it's not must City, it's must um, Real, no? In the Champions League. So, yeah. Should. I prefer should. Richard says, big up Turkish. I met you at the Emirates in 2018 when you were just about to start this channel. You were recording footage. Love the growth. Never change my G. We will win a trophy this year. Big up Richard, man. Big up Richard. I can't. To be honest, my eyes are getting a bit bad. I can't tell the picture out too much. But I remember those times, man. I remember those times I was um, recording things, bits and bobs outside the stadium and whatnot. I'm just trying to get a feel of what, what the people want to see. And here we are, five years later. Big up. Love for the love. You lot have made this possible, man. Really appreciate that, Richard, man. Love for the support, man. Love for the support. Six years deep. And that's crazy. Ben White fan says, Turkish, I met Kai Havertz in Cologne just now. What a guy. Told him we drew Bayern and he was calm about it. Oh, shit. These men are on break, innit? I was thinking, what the fuck is this guy doing in Germany? <laughs> I was about to, about to call my son and say, are you still a Kai fan or what? This guy's he's bopped off to Germany. Talk about Obo going Barca. Nah, listen. No one clipped that bit out of context, please. Um, what a guy. Told him we drew Bayern. He was calm about it. Listen, as long as he's calm about it on the pitch, I couldn't care less. Yeah, if he gets a chance, bury it. If he gets a chance to create a chance, create it. If he gets a chance to push the manager, push him as well. Fuck it, why not? I don't mind a bit of that. Um, but big up Kai. Slowly but surely, he's he's pr proving his worth. I won't talk about how I see his future at Arsenal um, because people will, will think that it's more me giving backhanded compliments than it's not. Um, that's something for a later day. Long may it continue. Four goals in the last four, couple of assists. We move. Daniel, Turkish, you are, the, you are the Arsenal internet avatar, bringing balance to the Arsenal online community. I try. I try. Sometimes I'm not balanced. Sometimes I lose myself, you know. More often I lose myself for the worse than for the better. Last year I did lose myself for the, uh, for the better a couple of times. I remember that one time. I didn't compare Saka, Jesus and Martinelli to fucking MSN, yeah? But I lost myself and I didn't word it as good as I should have worded it. And now that clip haunts me. But it is what it is. I love, I love, um, I love MSN. I can't lie, they're the best front free the world has ever seen. So when people think that that's what I meant, it does jar me. That does rattle me a bit. But fuck it. We move. Four more super chats here, and then I'll see what the live chat is saying. Abu Bakar says, Harry Kane, please stand up. It's your time to shine. Abu Bakar, you're. But you belong on one of Matisse or Saeed's hate alongs, my bro. What are you doing over here? Twinny says, worst case scenario, no one can say we bottled it. They still will. They still will. 100%. Us, we're the most hated. Like, didn't Liverpool just want Liverpool five points ahead of us before we played them last month? And now we're, we're ahead of them. But when we lost the five point lead last year, we're the biggest bottlers the world has ever seen. <laughs> so, most hated. Could you try deluded Guna, Guna next time you're out? Could you try deluded Guna next time you're out? What do you mean out? If you mean deluded Guna on the chat, to be honest, it's been a long time. Um, I haven't done a video with him. Why not? Why not? I mean, as you can see, slowly but surely, you're seeing my channel come back to, I don't know, action, let's say. Um, you've got the show with me and Curtis, the OGs. You've got title talk with me, James and Steve. You've got this Turkish talk solo vids. So slowly but surely, you're seeing more and more content, and I'm all for suggestions and you know thoughts, opinions, and and whatnot. Um, that's why I always ask. So, deluded is someone that's always on the list. It's just that it's a list that I haven't touched in on for years now because once I picked up with AFTV a bit more and the big six that I'm picking up to, you know, you got to focus with little man as well, and little man means more to me than any of this combined yeah my time has been scarce so um yeah keep it i'll keep it in mind but it's something that's in mind anyway carl says we'll be taking on a german club we'll taking on a german club give havertz motivation potentially most germans would want to play for bayern munich that tends to be the case maybe that's the dream of his too i wouldn't be surprised if there's quotes from Havertz saying one day bayern um which which i think will bode well for us you know, go and do go and do your thing against the, the the greatest side Germany has seen and will ever see. I mean, I don't ever see even 
when I'm good, gone in the ground for years, I don't see anyone um, catching up or overtaking Bayern Munich over in Germany. Big up Fonzi. Met you at SoFi last year with my pups. Big up you, big up pups. Hope you're all good. Hopefully you come down. LA is definitely, LA is on my list for sure. Like I want to do Philly and I want to do whatever, maybe Vegas. But LA, nah, LA and Philly. I have to do the LA and Philly. You lot know on this channel, I talk about rap and hip hop a lot. And Philly, I mean, if you watch my solo stream, Cassidy was one of my favorite rappers growing up. Um, Will Smith, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, he's from Philly. Beans and State Property. Fit. So I've got a few places that I want. And I, and I, I want a Philly cheesesteak. I want a, I want an original, genuine Philly cheesesteak. I've had it a few different places. I've had it in Mexico. I've had it in Orlando. I had it in America in the summer. Just got, But I want a real Philly cheesesteak, that real one. I used to see it in Fresh Prince. Comes in the bag, grease in the bag. Like That's what I want. That's what I want. Yeah, it's heart attack in a bun, but we only live once, people. We only live once. I need that Philly cheesesteak. But yeah, link up, 100%, Fonzie. I'm there in LA without a doubt. ADR says, don't worry about people saying flip-flop. People online aren't used to men saying they're wrong or change their opinions. The reality is you have to change your opinions in life or you won't be successful, 100%, bro. And not just successful. I mean, if you don't change your opinions, you'd be a dickhead. You know, you'd be wrong and strong, you know. Everyone must change their opinions on something. And um, it just happens to be that we're in front of camera and people can link our opinion from two years ago to our opinion now, put them back to back, release the clip, and then it looks like you said it back to back days rather than three years apart. Part and parcel of the game. The game is the game. What can we do? Can we talk about how overrated Ronaldo is? CR7, that is. No. No, I mean, I'm not his biggest fan. I tend to favor Messi in this debate, but Ronaldo's a legend. Ronaldo's one of the greatest players ever. Um, but yeah, I'm not here to 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 slander him or or talk down about him. But I hear Lee Judge is in the building. Apparently, Invincible will be recorded real soon. Um, so we've only got a few minutes left. Once they start walking up the stairs, I'll I'll call it a day. But we've still got two K in the building, so um, I'll go through the live chat, see what other comments there are. Bang, one thousand and thirty likes. We've hit. The thousand like mark love for the love people bang on time as well slowly but surely we're gonna um wind down but bang on time um so i love that back to the ronaldo thing since we're here that's another thing that online people can't like i'll be on stream saying messi's clear of ronaldo like i don't even want to hear them in the same sentence and that's my opinion but then people will be like ah oh, he doesn't rate ronaldo what i just said messi's clear of him i haven't fucking said jovino's clear of him like, bruv, like, Messi's in it. People online are just tapped. Some people are tapped. You got some people like ADR who's who's calm, who can have a debate, who can disagree, who can, you know, I like that. I like people disagreeing with me, but having a debate. That's what life's about debates, <laughs> disagreeing. And if we all agreed with each other, what the fuck kind of world would this be? <laughs> Where would we we'd be living? I, I don't understand. Actually, the world might be a better place, but we're talking football world here. We're talking football world. Imagine all football fans agreed. Just just pack it up. Just pack it up and go. You know? Um, big up Taylor. Big up best in the world. Big up the mods, man. Keep modding. Keep doing your thing. Big up Beige and Guna as well. Um, Beige and Guna, did you... I'm sure I saw a comment from you saying you messaged me on Insta. Can you do that again for me now? Can you do that again for me now? Because I'm sure on Big Six I saw in my peripheral... A comment of you saying you've messaged me but maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong if you if i did see that and you have then message me again because since i've uploaded the pics with zekai you know my son match and whatnot hella dms hella likes messages follows and whatnot and when that sort of thing starts happening i turn my notifications off and you know i'm yeah a coast a coast i just need to go back open it up and see what i missed um oh that was it Man said he wants to be a mod. Of course you can be a mod, bro. You've been here for time. That was it. It wasn't a DM. It was that. Ah, uh, once the chat catches up, I'll I say that because ah, uh, there we are, there we are, there we are, there we are. Beijing Guna, Beijing Guna. That is a mod. Standard, calm. There we go. There we go. Hey, don't start asking people. Don't start asking now. I know you're probably seeing that he asked and he got it, but that's because Beijing Guna, a long time, love for the love support of the channel it should have been done already so that's on me 
that's on me. Um, Super chat from LFC Sai saying Ramadan Mubarak Turkish. I am a Liverpool fan, but I enjoyed Arsenal football this year. But I agree with Grizz. You can go toe to toe with Real and City. City, I'm yet to see it, even though I'm very confident going into this game on the 31st of March. Um, I'm confident that we shouldn't lose that game. We shouldn't lose it. I wouldn't take a draw before it, but I would take a draw if that was the outcome, if that makes sense. I wouldn't take a draw before it because I think we can get three points. But if it was to be ending a draw, then it's a good point at the Etihad. Um, toe to toe with Real, again, the occasion, you know, Bernabeu, that all comes to play, the mentality side of things. I think when you look at quality and you look at how Arsenal have been over the last 18 months, I, I get why, you know, you'd fancy us or, you know, you'd, you, you think we can get the job done. But mentality in these you know, stadiums like the Bernabeu, Knights and the Champions League, that's something you can't account for. You can't really predict, assume, guess how it's going to turn out. But yeah, I mean, not frightened of anyone at all. Um, I didn't want City because, yeah, I'm, I just don't want Man Manchester City in the Champions League. I'm sure we'll have to play them somewhere along the line, but I'd rather Munich, I'd rather Bernabeu, I'd rather Barcelona, I'd rather... Um, wherever, wherever, you know, there's no San Siro left, but these are the stadiums I want to be want to be going to in the Champions League. Yeah. Ah, right, listen, 1800 still here. I'm gonna wrap it up now. Once again, Ramadan Mubarak to everyone. Um, following, um, hit the like button, share it, tag me, Turkish LDN on the socials, Instagram, Twitter, um, all of that stuff. Obviously, we've done the live draw on AFTV. Um, so yeah, I'll go so sh show some love to James as well. James has recorded. He's been James is doing big things on his channel, man. So go. <laughs> he's the, I actually don't know he's in the background there. I thought he went downstairs. Man said, "Woo!" Um, but yeah, I just see that he recorded that and the reaction to the Champions League. So I'm sure that'll be out soon. James Guna versus the channel. Um, and to be honest, the quality of his vids over the last six months. You could, go take a look, people. Go take a look. Go show him some love. Show this video some love. Make sure you subscribe. Put the notification bell on. Love for the love, as always. And I'll be back probably next time. Monday, Title Talk. Me, Steve, and James Redmond. Peace. I'm out. <laughs>